Liberal Viewer presents. So, welcome to the September 30th edition of Liberal Viewer Sunday Live Clip Roundup. Thanks for joining me. I've picked out the weekend's dozen best, most newsworthy clips for what should be a really educational, fair use, media criticism, and political analysis show for you all tonight. I will have a couple clips from the season premiere of Saturday Night Live, including Matt Damon's portrayal of Brett Kavanaugh and his evasive rage that I put in the title of the video. I also have a Bill Maher clip. I have the big five corporate outlets of ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, and Fox News, the so-called corporate media here in the United States, but... Uh, I don't have NBC because Meet the Press, even after this Newsweek, was canceled for golf, which uh, I actually, if you follow my Twitter, you saw I criticized uh, Meet the Press for that. Uh, I did want to tell you that I do have some personal experiences about Brett Kavanaugh that uh, I'm going to relate. You can see I'm wearing my, my Yale t-shirt here. You can see me back in 2004 uh, wearing that same t-shirt in front of Lawrence Hall on Old Campus. That's where I lived. You can see my then four-year-old daughter standing next to me there by Lawrence Hall. And so I did go to Yale with uh, Brett Kavanaugh. I did live in that dorm. He was in Lawrence Hall, Entryway D. I think I talked about this last week. Well, uh, this week uh, I saw an article in uh, The Cut, cut.com. Uh, I put a link to this down in the video description. Uh, this is... Um, Brett Kavanaugh's former roommate describes their debauched dorm at Yale, and that's the uh, best description of Lawrence Hall that I've seen online, and it quotes uh, Jim Garman, uh, one of my best friends uh, in my freshman year at Yale, who, uh, and then his former roommate, Kit, uh, Kit Winter, who switched to become one of Brett Kavanaugh's roommates, and they talk about the drinking, the, the throwing up, and especially about the Deeks that I talked about, the Delta Kappa Epsilon. Uh, that's why I thought what why I especially have a, a way of seeing that Brett Kavanaugh was not very honest in his testimony on Thursday, never mind his previous testimony, which I'll get to, but uh, I will talk about that as the show goes on here, and uh, I did also, though, promise to start with uh, the Saturday Night Live clip. It's the first of the clips you'll see. This is my clip list down at the link in the video description. You can see my clip list. Uh, you also see a link to all the sources of uh, the... Uh, video that I'm using, and uh, that includes this uh, clip from Saturday Night Live. Uh, it, and one of the strange things, drinking games came up, and I know some of you do a drinking game. I actually got one of the old beers that I used to drink at Yale. This is an Anchor Steam beer. I'm wearing my Yale shirt. I'm drinking beer in honor of Brett Kavanaugh, as portrayed by Matt Damon on Saturday Night Live uh, last night over here. What? <laughs> Senator Klobuchar. Okay, okay, here we go, here we go. Now... <laughs> Would you say in high school that you were a frequent drinker? Look, I like beer, okay? I like beer. Boys like beer, girls like beer. I like beer. I like beer. Okay, so I asked if you drank in high school and you said, I like beer 10 times. <laughs> leads me to the next question. Did you ever drink too many beers? You mean, was I cool? Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, then tell me this, Judge. Did you ever drink so much that you blacked out? I don't know. Did you? <laughs> huh? Huh? Uh. Huh? Did you ever black out? Excuse me? Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean that. I, I just, I think I blacked out for a second. I accept your apology, Judge. Hey, Senator Whitehouse. Yeah, I'd uh, just like to ask Judge Kavanaugh about his yearbook. Oh, yearbook. Oh, we're gonna, we're talking about a yearbook right now? Uh, Judge Kavanaugh, what is boofing? It was flatulence. I was 16. Could you use boof in a sentence? 
Sure. I passed out from drinking, but then I boofed so loud I woke myself up. Okay. What about Devil's Triangle? It's a drinking game. Okay. Eskimo Brothers? Drinking game. Eiffel Tower with Dougie One Nut? That was a possible trip to France that didn't pan out. Judge Kavanaugh, my staff just Googled all these terms, and they're clearly referring to sex. Well, that's impossible because I didn't have sex for many, many, many years. Many years. All I did was drink a lot and not think about having sex at all. I was the proudest, drunkest virgin you've ever seen. And everyone can relate. <laughs> That's all he did was drink a lot and not think about sex at all or girls or despite what his yearbook says. And, you know, I'm a year, I'm sorry, I'm one month younger than Brett Kavanaugh. And uh, so I'm from his cultural generation or whatever. And I recognize many of those references in his yearbook that he, and, you know, he said buffing was flatulence. But then why did it, was the question in the yearbook, no, no one hardly ever brought this up, have you buffed yet? That, that doesn't even make sense. Um, and, you know, there are people who say that it means anal sex. That's the whole boffing and boofing thing. You remember the whole thing about boffing and risky business? That was one of the movies. He mentioned Animal House and Fast Times at Ridgemont High uh, and uh, one other movie. Oh, yeah, Caddyshack. But uh, he did not mention risky business, which had the boffing thing. Not, not boofing, but boffing. And I think we all know what that was and the Renata alumnus and... The, all the things about the drinking, like I said, read this article. I put a link down to it in the video description. I can vouch for what Jim Garman says and what Kit Winter say. And about, like I said, I was in the basement room in entryway A. The, Brett Kavanaugh was in the basement room in entryway D. And I can vouch for pretty much everything in that article. Uh, and it definitely contradicts what Brett Kavanaugh said. Uh, about his drinking at Yale and you saw it, that was hopefully the Saturday Night Live clip shows that the zeitgeist of the country is uh, ridiculing Brett Kavanaugh's performance because it was ridiculous and uh, I want to show more ridicule both from HBO's Real Time with Bill Maher monologue from Friday and then some jokes from Saturday Night Live's Weekend Update. Here's the uh, Bill Maher clip over here. This was a totally different Brett Kavanaugh than the one who we saw testifying like a week before. Totally different. Angry volatile, bitter, belligerent, because nothing says I'm not capable of violent assault like flying into an unhinged rage. That's <laughs> always a good strategy. And it's... <laughs> it's good to know that the Supreme Court will now be eight bookish law nerds and the Hulk. That's... that's... <laughs> But, uh, no, really, if that was a divorce hearing, she would have gotten the kids. That's how I <laughs> looked at it. And, 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 you know... Why did Kavanaugh suddenly act that way? Because Trump told him to! <laughs> because Trump didn't like that he was being meek and, you know, good bread. He likes bad bread. He wants someone in his image, so he gave him whiny little bitch lessons. <laughs> and that's what we saw. This, this, and, you know, what? we have the evidence, his yearbook and everything, this choir boy act happened. I was like, you know, I spent my high school years concentrating on my, my friendships in church. <laughs> it's a lot about church. You know what defense doesn't work so great anymore? I can't be a sex criminal. I'm a Catholic. <laughs> you know. It's like saying I couldn't have met Russians. I was at Trump Tower. <laughs> but yeah, he's going on about how he has many friendships with women. He's helped many women and supported them and helped them with their careers. <sighs> you know, and he also says he's a big supporter of Me Too. In fact, when someone is ordering drinks, he always says, give me two. <laughs> because, I mean... I don't know if we could say he's definitely a rapist. I think that's too far, but he is a fucking liar and a drunk. <laughs> definitely a drunk. Not, maybe not now, but even in this testimony, he mentioned beer a lot. I mean, a lot. I like beer. Do you like beer? I just finished a beer. Do you have any beer? <laughs> I thought he was going to ride out on a Clydesdale. I... 
half, <laughs> half of his yearbook entries are about drinking and getting shit faced. He, he's in Keg Club and Ralph Club. And if he gets on the court, skip the robe, give him a toga. This guy is a partier. <laughs> And I think the Delta Kappa, Kappa Epsilon uh, pledges did wear togas at one point, if I'm remembering. And uh, I can tell you, my freshman year at Yale, there was a lot of heavy drinking, lots of alcohol available. Uh, one of the uh, two times in my life that I uh, joined the Ralph Club or whatever was in my freshman year of college, and I definitely remember that. Uh, and whatever, I'm not going to go into that story, but it wasn't in that basement bathroom where Brett Kavanaugh lived, where if you read that article that I put down in the video description, you'll see that there was like old vomit down there and it was just gross. And, uh, it was anyway, uh, I definitely uh, agree with that part of what Bill Maher said. And then he said one thing that I think is kind of important and I'm going to get to sort of in the next clip too, from Saturday Night Live, uh, that if this were a divorce, he wouldn't get the kids. And I've seen so many Repu Republicans talking about, oh, the burden of proof, the burden of proof, uh, you know, presumption of innocence. Well, that presumption, when the burden of proof is the burden of two things, the burden of production and the burden of persuasion. And so the burden of production means you have to show some evidence that uh, gets rid of the presumption of innocence. Now, beyond whether uh, in a hypothetical case, uh, a hypothetical criminal case where you only had the testimony of uh, Christine Blasey Ford and the testimony of Brett Kavanaugh that we saw on Thursday. Uh, and this is totally hypothetical because there would be some other police investigation to either corroborate or not corroborate. So that's what the FBI is supposedly doing. And I'll get to that in a minute. But uh, in that hypothetical case, I'm not sure that you couldn't convict Brett Kavanaugh based on I mean, certainly if he wasn't white and he gave that performance and Christine Ford gave her performance, I think you could get a jury to convict him. And certainly by preponderance of the evidence in like a civil case and uh, like 51% of the evidence, because she was so open and meticulous and, you know, about what she knew and what she didn't know. She wouldn't even say that Brett Kavanaugh was the one who pushed her into the room because she wasn't sure. Brett Kavanaugh, you know, he was angry. Uh, which they people are saying, well, that's because he was wrongly accused. Well, maybe, maybe that's how a wrongly accused person would react. But a wrongly accused person would also try to be completely honest and open. And he was totally evasive. Uh, there aren't many clips of the testimony in the news shows. I don't have. There's at the end. I have a, some clips of Christine Blasey Ford that uh, Chris Wallace on Fox News Sunday showed to Sarah Huckabee Sanders. That's the last clip I'm going to show. Other than that, there's very little of the testimony, but if you watched it and it's available everywhere, he just came across as not only angry, but evasive and dishonest, especially dishonest about his drinking, if you know what I know about his time at Yale. And uh, so regarding the burden of proof, I also, uh, you know, Bill Maher was talking about the divorce pr proceedings. I'm going to show some jokes from Saturday Night Live's Weekend Update, the beginning, and uh, ending with Michael Che talking about uh, what the burden of proof really is in a job interview over here. <laughs> Judge Brett Kavanaugh and Dr. Christine Blasey Ford appeared Thursday in front of the Senate Judiciary Committee in a classic debate of she said, he yelled. <laughs> Based on his testimony, I guess Kavanaugh thought the hearing was about whether he was cool in high school. We drank beer. I liked beer. Still like beer. I worked out with other guys at Tobin's house just to meet up and have some beers. Working out, lifting weights, we drank beer, we liked beer. I gotta say, you're not really helping yourself in a drunken assault case when you yell about how much you like drinking and how strong you were at the time. Pretty much the only ones who kept their composure at the hearing were the woman being questioned and the woman Republicans had to hire to talk to the woman being questioned. Now, on an optics level, I get why the Republicans did that, but if you're not the right person to ask questions at a Senate hearing, maybe you're not the right person to be a senator. <laughs> I just want to remind everybody that all this yelling and crying happened at this dude's job interview. <laughs> I mean, typically when you're asked about a sexual assault and your drinking problem at a job interview, you don't get the damn job. <laughs> I don't know if Mr. Kavanaugh actually has a history of assault or if he actually has a drinking problem, but I do know that he might. 
And you shouldn't be on the Supreme Court if you might. You shouldn't be on the People's Court if you might. Sometimes might is enough. I mean, I don't want to pet your dog if he might bite me. I don't want to leave you in my house if you might be a crackhead. I'm not going to have sex with you if you might have dated Charlie Sheen. So, yeah, the, the might standard for the job interview, uh, I mean, there is some uh, logic to that type of standard. And uh, so uh, I appreciated those jokes from Weekend Update. And I actually thought Bill Maher had some funny jokes for a change in his monologue. And uh, those are all the comedy clips. Now I'm going to get to the three news summaries and the one, two, three, four, five, the six newsmaker clips including a clip uh, from Kellyanne Conway, a clip from Sarah Huckabee Sanders, Maisie Hirono, a quick clip from Jeff Flake and Chris Coons. Uh, but uh, before I get to that, there are three news summaries. Usually I start with the NBC Meet the Press news summary, which is the best one. No Meet the Press this week. And like I said, the news summaries are really cursory. They didn't really go over the testimony. Uh, there, You'll see they had more Donald Trump clips than uh, clips of... Christine Blasey Ford or Brett Kavanaugh, uh, and you'll see that starting with the CNN State of the Union uh, introduction here. It's about a minute and 18 seconds where the state of our union this week is searching for answers and talking about them both being utterly convincing, which I don't agree with, as I will discuss with you after you watch that clip together over here. Hello, I'm Dick Tapper in Washington, where the state of our union is searching for answers. Both Judge Brett Kavanaugh and Professor Christine Blasey Ford say they are utterly convinced they are telling the truth, but both cannot be 100% accurate. And now the FBI has until the end of the week to investigate current credible allegations per the Senate Judiciary Committee. The FBI already is reaching out to witnesses and intends to interview key witness Mark Judge, Kavanaugh's high school friend, whom Ford said was in the room when Kavanaugh allegedly assaulted her. Kavanaugh denies that. The probe comes after public allegations made by three women, Ford, Deborah Ramirez, and a third woman, Julie Swetnick. The FBI has contacted Ramirez, but there's no indication that the FBI plans to speak to Swetnick at this point. Saturday, President Trump said the FBI has free reign to investigate Kavanaugh, but at a rally in West Virginia, the president also affirmed his support for the judge and cast the confirmation fight as part of a larger battle. But a vote for Judge Kavanaugh is also a vote to reject the ruthless and outrageous tactics of the Democrat Party. Mean obstructionists, mean resistors. For the last 18 months, Democrats have spent every minute trying to overturn the results of the last election. Joining me now is counselor to President And I will have uh, that Kellyanne Conway clip uh, that I promised a little later, where actually Kellyanne Conway admits or reveals that uh, she was a victim of uh, sexual assault, uh, though she doesn't really talk about it. And as I will explain when I show it, she almost uses it as a political tool. Not that I want to criticize her for being a victim, but the way she uses it is... Uh, well, I'll talk about that when I get to that clip uh, after it's the first clip I'm going to show you after these next two news summaries. I explained why I thought that was short, didn't really show the testimony, and also did it sort of as a he said, she said, kind of like the way the Republicans set it up. The same problem over here with uh, ABC's This Week with George Stephanopoulos saying, you know, who you believe depends on your politics and also has a clip of Trump, but no clips of Christine Blasey Ford or Brett Kavanaugh over here. Good morning and welcome to This Week. It was a week defined by that extraordinary confrontation on Capitol Hill. Dr. Christine Blasey Ford revealing a secret she kept for decades. Judge Brett Kavanaugh fighting to save his reputation and the Supreme Court seat he's coveted for decades. For a day, it felt like all of America was watching. What you saw, who you believed, may depend on what you already believe about politics, President Trump, the Me Too movement, and the standard that should be met for a lifetime seat on the Supreme Court. But I would bet that just about everyone watching could agree on one big thing. Our politics are broken, toxic. The big question, can we come back from the brink? It was that concern that drove Senator Jeff Flake to break with his party and call for a one-week pause to give the FBI a chance to examine at least some of the allegations against Judge Kavanaugh. What the FBI will find, how deep they will dig, not yet known. Saturday, President Trump promised to let them do their job. The FBI, I believe, is doing a really great job. They have been all over. 
already. They have free reign. They're going to do whatever they have to do. Whatever it is they do, they'll be doing things that we never even thought of. But having them do a thorough investigation, I actually think, will be a blessing in disguise. And we are joined now by one of the president's closest allies in the Senate, Senator Lindsey Graham, a member of the Senate. Senator Lindsey Graham. Uh, I do have a clip of Lindsey Graham later as well. Uh, but I did criticize both those news summaries. Uh, you know, they had sort of the basic points, but uh, they didn't really go into the testimony, which I think is important uh, for a news program that purports to cover the week. Uh, but neither one was as bad as the Fox News summary uh, from Fox News Sunday. Uh, you'll see that at the beginning, Chris Wallace summarizes it with four points that really minimizes what the whole, you know, the, what the whole allegation is against Brett Kavanaugh and maximizes the politics of it, starting with like the Supreme Court starting on Monday to make us feel some sort of urgency that he has to be uh, voted on and then ends with the midterms coming up. So like two of the four points are about the political situation. And then they go to Kevin Cork, who uh, basically gives, as usual, Fox News is like Trump TV uh, giving the spin that the White House would want, uh, especially about this FBI investigation, how it was all like, it was uh, all a big mistake that they, they were limiting who the FBI was going to talk to, which may or may not be true, uh, and showing, you know, and Trump stepped in there and said, we're going to do everything, and things that you never even thought of, uh, kind of another Trump clip. All three of them have Trump clips. Like, uh, anyway, I'll talk about it with you after we watch the Fox News Sunday news summary together over here. And hello again from Fox News in Washington. Tomorrow, the Supreme Court opens its new term with eight justices on the bench. Judge Brett Kavanaugh's nomination facing another week of uncertainty after President Trump, under pressure, ordered a new FBI background check into allegations of sexual misconduct by his nominee. And all this just five weeks before the 2018 midterm elections. In a moment, we'll speak with White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders. But first, Fox News White House correspondent Kevin Cork has the latest from Capitol Hill. Kevin. Chris, the fate of the president's Supreme Court nominee was thought to rest in the hands of a few fence-sitting Republican senators, but it is now clearly in those of the FBI, which has opened up a supplemental background investigation into Judge Brett Kavanaugh. I would suggest that we certainly. The probe comes in the wake of a series of sexual misconduct allegations dating back to Judge Kavanaugh's high school and college years. Saturday, the attorney for Deborah Ramirez confirmed that agents have contacted his client, an indication that the probe will look beyond the allegations of Dr. Christine Blasey Ford. The scope of the FBI investigation had been in question. Saturday, NBC accused the White House of limiting the probe, something the president quickly denied, tweeting, actually, I want them to interview whoever they deem appropriate at their discretion. White House spokesman Raj Shah noted that the Senate sets the scope and duration of the FBI probe and that the White House is letting the FBI agents do what they're trained to do. Saturday night at a rally in West Virginia, the president reiterated his support for his embattled nominee. A vote for Judge Kavanaugh is also a vote to reject the ruthless and outrageous tactics of the Democrat Party. Mean obstructionists, mean resistors. For the last 18 months, Democrats have spent every minute trying to overturn the results of the last election. Michael Avenatti, who is the attorney for a third accuser, Julie Swetnick, says he is yet to hear from the feds. Chris, the investigation is expected to wrap up by the end of this week. Kevin Cork reporting from Capitol Hill. Kevin, thanks for that. And uh, I think I kind of pre-criticized what was wrong with that, the four points at the beginning and the pro-Trump spin at the end uh, regarding the investigation. Uh, as to how the investigation is going to turn out, that's uh, hard to say. Uh, there were some talk about it uh, in, I, in clips I didn't take from the news programs. I am going to show you this almost eight-minute clip of Kellyanne Conway. And believe it or not, I cut like a minute and 20 seconds out of this you'll see there are a couple cuts because it was if i hadn't it would be like nine and a half minutes long so uh this is i wanted to start off first of all with uh jake tapper asking kellyanne conway about one of my uh yale classmates lynn brooks who uh, i did not know that well but i do know uh i would recognize as having gone to yale with me and having lived in my freshman dorm uh, and she talks about how what Brett Kavanaugh said about drinking just isn't credible. She drank with him. She knew about the Deeks, the DKE, uh, Delta Kappa Epsilon fraternity. 
Uh, and so that, I wanted to start with that. And you'll see that uh, Kellyanne Conway never really addresses that. She brings up red herrings, including, like I said, her sexual assault or her being a victim of a sexual assault, uh, which she doesn't really talk about, but uses to sort of change the subject, which I find that kind of disturbing. You can let me know what you think down in the comment section. Jake Tapper takes it in stride and even, you know, says he feels sorry. And I think he does a good job with that, but uh, he doesn't really follow up on the first question and... Uh, let's her like keep attacking the Democrats without uh, and not really uh, pinning her down on she says well you know I think that uh, that Christine Blasey Ford is compelling and credible although she denies credible at the end but and you know she's just, she could be right it's just she's just mistaken about who it was and never really explains why it is that that's a more likely explanation than Brett Kavanaugh drank too much but uh, anyway, here's the 7 minute 55 second edited last part of the Jake Tapper interview with Kellyanne Conway. The whole thing's available at a link down in the video description to the State of the Union program. But here's the part I wanted to show you and talk about with you after we watch it together over here. Classmate, a classmate of Judge Kavanaugh from, uh, at Yale. Take a listen. There had to be a number of nights where he does not remember. In fact, I was witness to the night that he got tapped into that fraternity and he was stumbling drunk in a ridiculous costume saying really dumb things. And I can almost guarantee that there's no way that he remembers that night. Do you have any concerns that Judge Kavanaugh in asserting that even though he has been a heavy drinker in, in high school and college at times, his assertion that he has never, ever had any memory loss the next day. Jake, this do you have is any concerns that, that do you have any concerns that that's not true? Jake, I didn't go to college with him. I've never been out drinking with him. This is what he has said under oath, and that's got to matter she, more that, than you're allowed to. But that woman that would not be admissible. Is a Republican, and Please. she says that she doesn't believe him. Okay, she doesn't believe him, and many people do, including the 100 women who still stand with him, many of whom didn't vote for President Trump, who nominated Brett Kavanaugh, a number of them who, frankly, are Democrats, and will tell you that, have been out there writing op-eds, giving sworn testimony. Why doesn't that matter to anybody? Not a single parent whose young daughters Judge Kavanaugh has coached in basketball has come forward and said, you know what, I now have second thoughts. So we can cherry pick people's comments all day long. While I was waiting uh, to come on an interview with you this morning, I was looking over the shoulder of one of your researchers who had a very rough tweet uh, up about somebody basically trying to recount for Dr. Ford things that they had done together. Do you remember this, Christine, threatening her on Twitter? So you're always going to find somebody to try to impugn the integrity of either Kavanaugh or Ford. Mm. That is not what this is about. This is about whether or not this man and his impeccable judicial temperament and qualifications in 12 years on the second highest court in this country is qualified to be on the United States Supreme Court. What you saw the other day, even though a lot of it was a national disgrace, mm. what you saw the other day is a Senate Judiciary confirmation hearing. It is not a criminal or civil proceeding. And let me just say also, it's not a meeting of the Me Too movement. I feel very empathetic, frankly, for victims of sexual assault and sexual harassment and rape. That, <clears throat> I'm a victim of sexual assault. I don't expect Judge Kavanaugh or Jake Tapper or Jeff Flake or, or anybody to be held responsible for that. You have to be responsible for your own conduct. I, this is not Bill Cosby. Those, those comparisons on your network are a disgrace and the anchor should have called them out. This is not even Bill Clinton. You have, you have Senate Judiciary Committee members who refuse to remove Bill Clinton from office after he received oral sex in the Oval Office mm -hmm. and lied about it to a grand jury as President of the United States. The, the hypocrisy is ridiculous. And if not one Senate Judiciary Committee member changes his or her vote, because of what they learned from the FBI investigation. That tells you all you need to know about what the president and Judge Kavanaugh has, has said is a sham. Let's just be honest what this is about. Well, it's so raw partisan politics. All women can't, you know, I want those women who, who, who were sexually assaulted the other day who were confronting Jeff Flake, God bless them. But go blame the perpetrator. But can I ask you a question? First of all, I'm That's who's responsible for first, our sexual assaults, the people who commit them. The, the first time, this is the first time I've ever heard you talk about something personal like that, and I'm really sorry. Well, that I'm you just, went, I've just had it. I, I just but had I'm really it sorry that you went through that. But what, what, you work for a president who says that all the women who have accused him are lying. Uh, there have been a number of people. And don't who, conflate that 
with this, and certainly don't conflate it with what happened to me. Can you It'd be a huge mistake? I don't Jay. know what happened. I'm not conflating it. it. Well, let's not do it. Let's not always bring Trump into everything that happens you, in this universe. That's mistake President, number one. President Trump said his personal experiences have informed his view of this. <clears throat> That's the only reason I'm bringing that out. He was asked about that, and he said, yes, it informed how I look at it because I've been accused, I've had so many false allegations against me. That's what he said. So my question is, as a survivor of this, and again, I'm deeply, personally, very sorry about whatever pain you've gone Thank through. Thank you. But, but does that not make you think, <clears throat> when, you, when you hear somebody like Professor Ford or, or other people make allegations, does that not make you think these women need to be heard? And even if there are not corroborating witnesses, that is not absence of, of evidence is not evidence of absence. Jake. They should all be heard, and they should be heard in courts of law. They should be heard in depositions. They should be heard in proceedings. Those who, who can prosecute, those who have civil and or criminal uh, causes of action should pursue that. But we do treat people differently who are either the victims or the perpetrators of this based on their politics now and based on their gender. That is a huge mistake. America, it's a huge mistake. Let's stop Don't. judging the victims and the perpetrators according to their to their but who politics, is, but who is according doing to that? whom they work. Do you think lost, I would work? Al Franken lost his job. Harvey Weinstein lost his job. All these members of the media oh lost my their God. jobs. Let's not, and let's not compare Harvey Weinstein or Bill Cosby I'm just saying, you're and saying, a few you're others to what's people, happened here. You're saying that society or the media or someone is, is, is looking at these things through a political lens, and I am pointing to... I think this week was that way. This week was that way, and it shouldn't be that way. But it hasn't been that way in the last year. I, I don't disagree with you about what you're saying about... Clinton and, and his behavior in, in, in you know. But you back... shouldn't be a footnote. And what about those women? We, it's not I mean, a footnote. There was criticized. a huge investigation. Brett Kavanaugh worked on that investigation. But, but and he women... was very strongly of the opinion that, that Bill Clinton needed to answer for what he did. Do you know what a, a, a liberal Democratic woman told me this week who supports Brett Kavanaugh because she's worked with him for a long time? She said, Kellyanne, I'm so, you know, obviously everybody's um, so either emotionally drained or disgusted. Wait, let me just say this to you. Um, that my liberal democratic friend said something I totally agree with and I hadn't thought about quite the way she did, which is she feels so badly for the way she rolled her eyes and treated people like Paula Jones and Juanita Broderick. And these people had true claims and they were dismissed again I, on the I altar of a, of a I presidential agree debate. With you, but, our, but we are not now where we were then. Two years ago? Where we were then. And uh, I interviewed Juanita Broderick two years ago. So, I mean, I, we are not we are not as a society and we are not as the media where we are. Let me just ask you as a final question. Um, you have said that you found her credible, Professor Blasey Ford. I said I found her compelling and I'm glad she had, uh, had her voice, yes. And I think they could both be right. I think something terrible could have happened something to her. The happened. same summer she and I were 15 and that Judge Kavanaugh was not involved. And I think that is why you have sworn testimony. Mm -hmm. That is why you have corroborating evidence if you can find it. Um, and that's why I suppose the FBI will continue to investigate. I, I'm a big fan of transparency and accountability, so I'm happy, although I think it was torturous for both Ford and Kavanaugh, and people should stop using both of them for their own political gains, may I say. Mm -hmm. But I'm happy that if they were willing to do that, that they came forward and, and, and testified under oath. But it's got to matter. The whole thing has to matter. It has to matter who they've been throughout their lives, who he's been, mm -hmm. that he's gone through six FBI vets. We can't just, people are afraid, Jake, people are afraid that they'll never be able to defend themselves against 36-year-old allegations that's from, when they, from before they were adults. But there are no also, as you know, and as I certainly don't need to tell you, there are also people who are afraid that they're going to be sexually assaulted. Yes, unless people on Twitter and elsewhere right now saying, oh, well, she's, how could she work for Donald Trump? I work for President Trump because he's so good to the women who work for him. And he's so good to the women of this country who are much better off yeah. with, with security and prosperity because of his leadership. So I don't want to hear it. Um, I don't want to hear it from pre any of them. Preemptive, preemptive <laughs> message for the tweeters out there. Kelly and Conway, thank you so thank much you. for your time. We really appreciate it. <laughs> So Kellyanne Conway was definitely at the uh, top of her form there. Uh, Jake Tapper, not so much. I think he was a little disarmed by the uh, sexual assault revelation, uh, which I can understand. And uh, But she never really answered that question about the Lynn Brooks quote about how dishonest Brett Kavanaugh was about his drinking. And I'll get to a little more of that. But she also did this thing where he kept mentioning people, you know, Harvey Weinstein, Bill Cosby, Al Franken. Oh, don't compare. Don't compare. Don't compare. And then when it was her turn, it was 
you know, Paula Jones, Juanita Broderick, and they were all had true, you know, true complaints. Uh, she was comparing, and I mean, Christine Blasey Ford seems more credible than Juanita Broderick to me, although it's been a long time since I looked at the Juanita Broderick and Paula Jones stuff, and I was never one of the one of those people who was a, a fan of Bill Clinton. I I didn't think he should be removed from office, but I. Uh, thought he was kind of a scuzzy guy at the time. Uh, I I think I when I when I uh, talked about Hillary Clinton becoming president, I mentioned once or twice that I didn't want to have to spend any more time defending the Clintons, which uh, just because as a Democrat back when Clinton was president, he like did a lot of things that if you wanted to you know uh, talk you know to advance the interests of the Democratic Party, you had to try to justify things that I didn't like to justify. And there were enough things I didn't like to justify about President Obama and his, you know, uh, drone war and continuation of warrantless wiretapping. And, you know, I'm not always a fan of uh, Democratic presidents, and I wasn't that big a fan of Bill Clinton. And uh, so I don't consider myself someone who has to look back and wonder why I rolled my eyes at Paula Jones and Juanita Broderick. But what uh, Kellyanne Conway did there, I thought was pretty dishonest. And uh, that's her craft. That's why she was at the top of her form. She uh, brought up red herrings. She brought up straw man arguments. Uh, she, I mean, well, we just watched it together and it kind of speaks for itself, but I wanted to give my commentary. You can let me know what you think down in the comment section. And uh, now I'm going to move on to another person who has something to say about Brett Kavanaugh's drinking, uh, Senator Amy Klobuchar. Uh, she gave two interviews. Uh, I You should also, if you have time, watch the CBS Face the Nation interview at a link I put down in the video description. I almost took a clip from that one, especially where she sets out... Uh, what would be an adequate FBI investigation? I think she was spot on on that, and I've been kind of rushed today for reasons I'll just uh, I'll talk about later at the end. Uh, so I didn't have time to get that clip, but here she is talking about uh, this is a, a State of the Union Jake Tapper, right? Clip eight here, where I picked this clip because Jake Tapper shows at least a little bit of Brett Kavanaugh where he was like really rude to Senator Amy Klobuchar, you know, asking if he ever blacked out. I think maybe he was very defensive uh, because of some of the things, you, like I said, you can read about in this article that quotes one of my best friends at Yale and people I knew talking about uh, Brett Kavanaugh being a big drinker. Well, that may be why he uh, like snapped its Democratic Senator Amy Klobuchar. And she talks about that and talks about how his blackouts may... Be the reason why he doesn't remember what happened to Dr. Christine Blasey Ford over in this clip. You're saying there's never been a case where you drank so much that you didn't remember what happened the night before or part of what happened. That's, you're asking about yeah blackout. I don't know. Have you? Could you answer the question, Judge? I just so you have, that's not happened. Is that your answer? Yeah, and I'm curious if you have. I have no drinking problem, Judge. Yeah, judge. Yeah, nor do I. Okay, thank you. One of the most notable personal moments in a hearing full of high emotion, anger, and tears, Judge Kavanaugh later apologized to Senator Klobuchar for that interaction, but the exchange has led some to question Kavanaugh's temperament for the Supreme Court. Joining me now is Democratic Senator Amy Klobuchar of Minnesota. She's, of course, a member of the Senate Judiciary Committee. Um, Senator, thanks for joining us. He apologized for asking thanks, you that Jake. question. But do you agree with some of your colleagues who say that the fact that he made that comment to you and his general tone and tenor and demeanor at the hearing demonstrated a lack of judicial temperament? I was really stunned uh, by how he acted at that hearing. This is a basically a job interview for the highest court of the land. And all I was trying to get at are some of the issues you were discussing with Kellyanne Conway, and that is that everyone has said uh, that they respected Dr. Ford for coming forward, that uh, her testimony was compelling and credible. Well, both accounts can't be true. And so, one, 
one idea here is that he simply was drinking more than he was saying over this time period, and that he didn't remember what happened. And so I was just simply trying to get at that and really couching it in the fact that I had alcoholism in my own family. My dad, who's 90 now, struggled with it throughout his life and finally got treatment and is sober and got help from AA. And so I was actually trying to get at the truth. And so that's why I was stunned by how he answered it. But then, of course, he, he later apologized. Do you think that he was telling the truth when he said that he has never had any memory loss after a night of drinking? It doesn't quite make sense to me, because, first of all, you have uh, these other people uh, from parts of his life who have said that um, he was belligerent when he was drunk and other things. Now, they have not been interviewed by the FBI. And so that was my hope and why when he apologized, I said, look, I just want to see an FBI investigation here. We know that she passed a polygraph test, which, while not admissible in regular courts, is used all the time for FBI, for CIA, for Defense Department, um, and she passed it with flying colors. So these are things that the FBI could look at as they evaluated the credibility of the witnesses. Are you confident? You just heard Kellyanne Conway say the FBI can invest. Uh, and then they go on again to talk about whether the FBI investigation will be sufficient, and that remains to be seen. That's one of the big open questions. Uh, but like I said, I don't even think we need the FBI investigation to know that Brett Kavanaugh is like a lying little weasel. I, th I told you he was like a weasel uh, in his like policy answers. Right? He lied about uh, the the receipt of the stolen Democratic memos from Manny Miranda. He lied about being the manager of the Charles, the controversial Charles Pickering nomination for federal judge. He lied about uh, having been involved in the early stages of the warrantless wiretapping memo writing. Uh, he, I mean, whether, I mean, he was at least dishonest, evasive, if you don't want to go to the whole, you know, committed the crime of lying to con Congress, but he was dishonest and evasive to the, at least, and then when he was answering the questions with like with Amy Klobuchar there, uh, Senator Amy Klobuchar uh, was one of the Democrats I thought did one of the best jobs. Uh, I thought uh, Senator Patrick Leahy did a great job uh, right before they uh, voted uh, to send him out of committee. He gave one of the best speeches. Some other Democrats didn't do such a great job, uh, but uh, anyway, I'm not going to go into that. But uh, I I do think that. Uh, that uh, by the time you finish this video, you should realize that Judge Brett Kavanaugh is a lying little weasel. There's basically no doubt about it. I don't, I don't know what happened with uh, Dr. Christine Blasey Ford, although she was much more credible and believable than, you know, his angry, evasive uh, uh, rant at the, at, on Thursday. But uh, I do know that he lied about other things. And uh, I, I will get to that a little more after I show you some more clips. The next one, this is uh, clip nine from ABC's This Week with George Stephanopoulos. This is the Lindsey Graham clip where he tries to say, oh, there's some problem. There's some problem with Dr. Christine Blasey Ford. He said that she has some problem. That's what he said on Sean Hannity. And he tries to say some problem and that something bad happened to her. But and, you know, we have to feel bad for her. Uh, but, she, you know, she was really victimized. You know who really victimized Dr. Uh, Christine Blasey Ford? It was the Democrats. You heard it from Kellyanne Conway, and you're going to hear it again here uh, from Lindsey Graham. And then at the end from Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Here's Lindsey Graham talking to ABC's George Stephanopoulos on This Week This Morning over here. Dr. Christine Blasey Ford, you said she was abused yeah. by the Democrats. On, on Sean Hannity's yeah. pro program, you seem to suggest she has a problem. I want to play that. I am now more convinced than ever that he didn't do it, that he's the right guy to be on the court, that Ms. Ford has got a problem, and destroying Judge Kavanaugh's life won't fix her problem. She has yeah, a problem? Yeah, yeah I, I think she does. I think it was clear to me that something happened to Ms. Ford. She's led an accomplished life. But we have to look at this through some prism. I don't assume that he's guilty and he's got to prove to me he's not. This is a very serious accusation 36 years ago. To me, she, she was troubled by something. But when it comes to Brett Kavanaugh, he emphatically denied it. He went through his l diary. Everything we know about him suggests he's not this kind of person. The people that she claimed were there said they don't know what she's talking about. She couldn't remember how she got there and how she got back. My problem is not with Dr. Ford. 
I really believe she was horribly treated. Whoever betrayed her trust to remain anonymous. But she says she's 100 percent certain. You. She says she's 100 percent. She says she's 100 percent certain it was Brett Kavanaugh. Yeah. Well, I can tell you this. I've been a lawyer for a long time, and you look at the accusation, and it has to be corroborated, and here's what I'm 100% certain of. When she said Ms. Kaiser was at that party, she was wrong. When she claims that, uh, uh, when people claim that Brett Kavanaugh, not just her, is a bumbling, stumbling drunk who drugs women as a gang rapist, I don't believe it. I have a lot of... Uh, sympathy for what Dr. Ford's gone through, but the allegations did not hold up. She can file a complaint in Maryland, a criminal complaint that will not get out of the batter's box. If you're accused of a crime in this country, you have to be put on notice of when it happened, where it happened, and there has to be some corroboration. So this complaint will never get legs in the legal system, but it can go forward. But I'll promise you this, this committee, I hope Senator Grassley, will do what I've suggested, investigate the abuse here who leaked anonymous letters, who referred uh, Dr. Ford to a lawyer that was a political activist. Did anybody in the committee betray her trust by sending it to the, to the media so the hearing would be delayed? Why did she not know that we were willing to go to California? How did that happen? Could our lawyers possibly have not told her that? If these lawyers did not tell her that we we're willing to go to California to avoid this debacle, I want to know that and hold them accountable. Senator Graham, thanks for your time this morning. I apologize for those problems with the sound. Well, and we're joined. So that was a really weak argument from Senator Lindsey Graham. And his, of all the Republican senators, I think his uh, performance at the hearings was probably the most morally repugnant. If you watched, uh, the Republicans had this uh, prosecutor from Maricopa County, Arizona, do all the questioning of Dr. Christine Blasey Ford. And then when Brett Kavanaugh came back in the afternoon, uh, there was like one or two Republicans had the um, a prosecutor from Arizona do their questioning of Brett Kavanaugh. And then she like got to the July 1st uh, calendar entry that uh, kind of backed up Christine Blasey Ford's story that he was having brewskis or skis with a, a judge and PJ and some other people and Judge and PJ were both mentioned by Christine. Like his calendar is actually backed up Christine Blasey Ford. Uh, if you're looking for corroboration, that's like no corroboration. That's what you hear from all the Republicans. There actually was corroboration. And if you want more corroboration, that's why you need a, a real FBI investigation, which I hope they can get done in a week. But anyway, I'm digressing. And I now want to, uh, I think, the, oh, the one other thing that when... Uh, Lindsey Graham at the hearing when he like was the first one to take back his time and they like fired the prosecutor from Arizona and he just like gave this whole performance of in, you know kind of similar to what you just saw there but just like much more histrionic and uh, apologizing to Brett Kavanaugh and uh, saying also apologizing to Christine Blasey Ford for being used by the Democrats that that's who really victimized her not whoever like did that thing to her back in the summer of 1982 or whatever. But uh, anyway, uh, I think he, a lot of people have said that he's uh, trying out to be the next attorney general in the Trump administration. I think that may be true. I guess uh, time will tell on that one as all the pundits say on the news shows. And now I want to move on to the next uh, clip also from ABC. This is uh, Maisie Hirono, the democratic Senator from Hawaii. She did an okay job, not as good as, uh, Amy Klobuchar in the questioning. Uh, I think actually she could have done a better job. Uh, she didn't do as bad a job as Diane Feinstein, but uh, this is, she was also on ABC and she appeared after Lindsey Graham. This is uh, her responding to, um, among other things, the idea that it's the Democrats who need to be investigated over here. I'll begin Morning. Uh, with picking up on what we just heard from Senator Graham right there. Mm -hmm. He is saying that there's going to be an investigation of the Democrats and how you handle Dr. Christine Brasey Ford. Again, uh, they're not focusing on the credibility uh, or the, the, these credible reports, and it's all about why did somebody wait so long and all of that. The crux of the matter is that these are serious allegations, and we have been calling for an FBI investigation for what seems like months, 
These are not normal times. Under normal times, in a situation like this, there will be an FBI report. We would have access to all of the documents that we should get with regard to this nominee, not just 10 percent of the documents. Under normal times, we would be able to uh, ask questions of the relevant witnesses, such as uh, Mark Judge. And, uh, you know, under normal times, uh, the, the senators would be asking their own questions at, rather than hiring a prosecutor as though this is some kind of a criminal case to go after the, the person who came forward bravely to tell us the truth of her experience. Are you confident the Democrats didn't leak that letter? And how do you respond to Senator Graham's charge that it was inappropriate for the Democrats to refer Dr. Blasey Ford to a lawyer? See, all of these things do not uh, focus on what we should be focusing, which is the credibility of uh, Judge Kavanaugh. That's what's before us right now. And uh, all kinds of other studies or investigations that can occur. But right now, what we need to focus on is our ability as senators to do our advice and consent job to determine whether Judge Kavanaugh is uh, credible, whether he was candid with us, whether his demeanor, by the way, in, in uh, accusing Democrats of some kind of a conspiracy to do him in is, uh, was so bizarre. And, by the way, even as uh, all of these accusations about this being politically motivated are being tossed around, everyone acknowledges, including Judge Kavanaugh, that Dr. Ford is not being politically mo motivated. That is very clear. So that brings us to the crux of whether or not this FBI investigation is going to be thorough. I would think that that is what uh, Senator Flake had in mind, that it would be a thorough investigation that would enable us to determine the character credibility and, indeed, uh, we saw in uh, Judge Kavanaugh's be uh, behavior, questionable demeanor. From what you've learned about the FBI investigation, will it be? And that's the big question. You know, will the FBI investigation be thorough enough to uh, shed some more light on who was telling the truth? I think I know who was telling the truth, uh, and I think I've made that pretty clear already. Uh, Maisie Hirono uh, did, does a good job on the shows. Like I said, I didn't th think she did that great a job questioning Brett Kavanaugh. And I think that was her necklace hitting the microphone. That's just sort of a media criticism thing. That whoever put the microphone on her should not have put it next to the necklace because that was kind of distracting. Uh, the next clip I want to show you, I actually messed up in the video description. I'll fix this later. But uh, I forgot to put in, change the Face the Nation uh, guest so that it, it still shows last week's guest. Uh, this week, uh, it's uh, Senator Chris Coons, Senator Jeff Flake, and Scott Pelley, because uh, this is a preview of uh, the 60 Minutes interviews. Uh, there are some other senators being interviewed on 60 Minutes. And this is, before this, uh, Jeff Flake said that uh, he, you know, when he saw Brett Kavanaugh, he said, you know, that's how I think I would react if I were wrongly accused. And uh, then you'll see uh, there's just a slight bit of that. And then Chris Coons talks about how uh, maybe that was true, but then he got really partisan when he talked about the Clinton conspiracy, and then Jeff Flake says, well, we got to give him the benefit of the doubt because he's wrongly accused. And like I've said in before previous clips, my big uh, criticism of both these senators saying that, you know, maybe it looked like a person wrongly accused is that a person wrongly accused might be angry, uh, but would also try to be as honest and forthright and uh, non-evasive as possible. And he was very evasive and was dishonest. So that's why he didn't look like a person wrongly accused to me. But here's uh, Jeff Flake and Chris Coons real quick on a preview of 60 Minutes, but from CBS's Face the Nation here. He had exchanges with Senator Feinstein, with Senator Klobuchar, with others that uh, I thought went over a line. Um, he was clearly belligerent, um, aggressive, angry. And I thought there was um, a tough dynamic there. Uh, as I watched him, part of me thought, this is a man who believes that he did nothing wrong and he's completely unjustly accused and he's being railroaded and he's furious about it. There were some lines that he delivered that were sharper, more partisan, more, this is the Clintons paying me back. This is a Democratic smear campaign that I was surprised um, struck to hear from a judicial nominee. I'm not at all surprised to hear that from other colleagues in the committee or on television, but I was really struck that I thought his anger got the best of him and he made a partisan argument 
that would have been best left to be made um, for his advocates and defenders on the committee. Made you wonder about his suitability? In my case, yes. It made me wonder about his suitability to serve on the bench. But, Senator Flake, you identified I, with it. You, you understood. Well, I, the part that he talked about, the mention of the Clintons and whatnot, I didn't like either. Uh, it, it seemed partisan, but, uh, boy, I have to put myself in that spot. You know, I think you give a little leeway there. Scott also spoke with two Republicans on the judiciary. <laughs> so, yeah, I thought I, Jeff Flake was uh, giving him too much of uh, the benefit of the doubt. And even Chris Kuhn saying, well, part of it sounded like a, a person wrongly accused. As I was saying, a person wrongly accused would have been totally open, would be like trying to get to the truth, would have wanted the FBI investigation, but also wouldn't have been so evasive, wouldn't have, you know, anyway, I think I made that point And uh, I actually only have uh, one more clip. Uh, this is the Sarah Huckabee Sanders clip I promised. Uh, and in this clip, actually, Chris Wallace does, you know, I saw one posting saying grills Sarah Huckabee Sanders, but it, I think he does question her somewhat about, you know, how it is that Dr. Christine Blasey Ford can be credible and compelling both to the president and to her, uh, but uh, then not telling the truth of the, about who it was who did it to her. And you'll see Sarah Huckabee Sanders does this dodge again. And well, she was really victimized by the Democrats. It's the Democrats' fault. Well, she wasn't really victimized by the Democrats. And anyway, this is uh, the four and a half minutes. And I will talk about it with you after we watch it together over here. The president said after the hearing about Christine Blasey Ford's appearance before the Senate Judiciary Committee. Take a look. I thought her testimony was very compelling, and she looks like a very fine woman to me. Very fine woman. Certainly, she was a uh, very credible witness. She was uh, very good in many respects. What did the president find compelling and credible about Dr. Ford's testimony? Well, I think certainly uh, anybody who watched that can't ignore the fact that it evokes some emotion. Uh, but this isn't about uh, emotion, it's about facts. And the facts all end on Brett Kavanaugh's side. Uh, certainly in all of the information that came through that hearing, there was no corroboration. Uh, but nobody could deny that her testimony wasn't compelling, that it wasn't impactful. And certainly it appears something happened to this to this woman and I, I don't think there's anybody in America uh, who would condone that or be okay with that I do think the big question is was that Brett Kavanaugh and I think based on his testimony and the information he provided you can easily come away and say it wasn't well I, I want to pick up on that I mean, you're not only the White House press secretary I don't have to tell you you're a woman <laughs> how did her testimony affect you personally and, and how do you explain it, that she could be that compelling, that believable, and that you think she's that wrong? Well, I, I, again, I think her, her testimony was compelling, but there was no fact-based information that supported the accusation. Uh, equally compelling, if not more so, was Brett Kavanaugh. Um, and I, you pointed out I'm a woman, I'm also a mom. I have a daughter and I have two sons. And I think it's a very, very dangerous place and a very dangerous road for America to go down to simply take an accusation and make it fact. Uh, we have to look at the information information provided based on what we know. I think Brett Kavanaugh was very compelling, uh, very credible, and he had a lot of corroboration to back up uh, his side of the story. And I think that's equally as important uh, that you have to take that into account as well. Let's take a look at some of Christine Blasey Ford's testimony this week. I believed he was going to rape me. I tried to yell for help. When I did, Brett put his hand over my mouth to stop me from yelling. What is the strongest memory you have? The strongest memory of the incident? Indelible in the hippocampus is the laughter, the, la the uproarious laughter between the two, and they're having fun at my expense. How does the president who has called her not only compelling but credible, how does he explain that she could be so credible and so specific in putting Kavanaugh and his best, one of his best friends, Mark Judge, in that room and be wrong about it? You say you think something happened. 
not necessarily with Kavanaugh. I mean, is it just mistaken? How, how does he explain it? Uh, look, I, I don't think any one of us can can know 100 percent, but I think we have to look at the information that's provided. There's no doubt that her story is heartbreaking and it's heart wrenching to watch it. I've watched it a number of times. Uh, again, I think you have to look at Brett Kavanaugh's testimony as well. Equally heartbreaking. Look at the destruction of his family. Look at how this has played out. The, the biggest thing that I think is so disgraceful and so disgusting is the way that the Democrats have allowed this process to play out and allowed both of these individuals to be so uh, beaten down, so destroyed by, frankly, the media who has played a big role in this, not to say they shouldn't report it, but that they're putting so much information and so much pressure on these two individuals. And I think that this all could have been avoided had Dianne Feinstein and her team done this behind closed doors, not done this in such a public setting. Uh, that was what Dr. Ford asked for. She wanted this to be done in a private way, and it wasn't, and it could have been, and a lot of this could have been avoided, and the pain and the suffering that she's having to relive and that uh, Judge Kavanaugh is having to experience all could have been avoided. Before the hearing, the day before the hearing. I'm not sure all of it could have been avoided just if they had done it earlier and done it in private. It's She still would have had to relive it, and uh, if it's true as it seems to me by a preponderance of the evidence it is then uh then brett kavanaugh would also have to relive it because it eventually would have had to become public and uh if it had come out earlier maybe there would have been a better fbi investigation than we're going to get and i guess that's what i'll talk about next week um uh that's all my the clips i have for this week uh if you liked the clips i picked out in my personal commentary give me a thumbs up Give me a supportive comment. Uh, subscribe to my channel. I do this every week. Uh, also, you can give me a super chat contribution before the end of the show. I saw. Thanks to my super chat contributors. Thanks to the people who give me the PayPal donations at the link down in the video description. Of course, my monthly patrons on Patreon. They're the ones I've depended on for years to when the YouTube revenue went away. So I appreciate that. Uh, I'm. Kind of, I had two like different things happen today. The you know the ACLU uh, over the weekend took a position opposing Brett Kavanaugh for Supreme Court. Only the fourth time in the 98 year history of the ACLU that the ACLU has opposed a Supreme Court nominee Bork or Rehnquist uh, when he was originally nominated to be a, an associate justice, then uh, Bork, Alito, and now. Kavanaugh, and uh, then there was a, an emergency meeting of my affiliate that I'm on the board of, the ACLU of Northern California, about what we were going to do about it, and so that took up some of my time today uh, before my show here, and then I'm rushing to go to a concert. Uh, is it uh, a Deep Purple concert that what some bands my wife likes that are like an hour away, so I have to finish that up. Uh, so I guess between the uh, ACLU interview on one side and the uh, the concert on the other side, I've kind of been squeezed into sort of the devil's triangle here, I guess, or no. Oh, and Sandy just got up. She, uh, I didn't have time to get a Dash and Sandy clip for you today, but uh, during the last part of the show there, uh, I did uh, get this quick picture of Sandy. Uh, oh, I think it may not be. I may have to. It's not even. See, it's kind of sideways there. I... I Apologize for that, but uh, anyway, that's why I'm uh, finishing up the show here, and uh, I will be back next week. Maybe I'll have some reason or some time to make some video during the week, uh, and next week uh, I won't be so rushed, but uh, until then, or until whatever. Uh... Oh, and someone asked me if the FBI won't be questioning me, uh, even though I lived in Lawrence Hall. Well, I've gotten several calls uh, from reporters, a couple from the Yale Daily News, one from the Washington Post. I was thinking if there were a real FBI investigation, they probably would call me because I lived in the basement of Lawrence Hall. So did Brett Kavanaugh. I, I mean, he was just, I was an entryway A, he was an entryway D. That, I mean, basically they should call everyone who lived in Lawrence Hall freshman year at least. Uh, if they're doing a real investigation. So uh, I was thinking maybe that would happen. And if it does, I'll let you know next week. Uh, I probably won't show up wearing my Yale shirt again. That was, and uh, won't show up with uh, one of the college beers like I did this week. But uh, that, I, that was the last uh, Super Chat contribution I saw there at the end. So then I guess until next week or uh, until I have some other reason to make a video, I will be seeing all of you around 
the internet.